Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today I'll be going over the lens comparison of the Sony G200-600 to and the new Tamron 150-500. to Let's get started. So we recently did a workshop with my workplace, the place that I manage, and we went on a wildlife walk to explore some local wildlife. So what a great opportunity to test out these two lenses. I will say that the Tamron, it being the 150 to 500, is definitely gonna lie somewhere in between the 200 to 600 and the Sony 100 to 400, both G lenses. The way that Sony does their lenses is they have three different standards of lenses. So they have their basic model, which isn't labeled with a G, it's just made as good quality to use with your camera for everyday purposes. Then you have your G lenses like this guy here, which is going to be more high end. Uh, it's going to be built better uh, than the standard lenses. And then of course you have G Master, which instead of this black G that you see here is actually gonna be orange. And these are our professional line, which if you were to see this in a professional line, it's probably gonna be twice as long and at a F4 um, F stop or something like that. Something made for sports or like National Geographic. Something that I can't get my hands on and I honestly don't know if I want to because that's a lot of pressure. Anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the Sony today. You can see that this thing is just massive. It is huge and it doesn't weigh as much as it looks, but it's still pretty hefty when you're hiking it around. Now, I am not a constant birder. I like to do a little bit of everything, as you guys can tell from my channel. I like to do portraits. I like to do animal photography, events, travel, a little bit of everything. So. You know, for me to carry this around is a lot. <laughs> so you have to be really serious about wanting distance. If you are, if your passion is wildlife, is birding, is going and seeing animals like bears and, and just like going to your national park and, and instead of more landscapes, you're really focusing in on the wildlife out there. This is gonna be for you. <laughs> Uh, so just going over kind of the layout of this lens. You see here that both will have uh, the L collar here. The reason that this exists, and a lot of people go, well, why is that on there? It just kind of gets in my way. The reason that exists is when you have your tripod mount on your camera, when you put this sucker on there, now it's totally front heavy versus putting the tripod plate on the L bracket here or mounting it directly on your tripod if it's sturdy enough, this now becomes the center base of it. Uh, so something to keep in mind. The 200 to 600 has an aperture of 5.6 to 6.3. Uh, very similar to the Tamron, which we'll go over here in a minute. It's just one stop off. This lens here is going to give you a few different options here when it comes to the switches. So you have your autofocus manual focus switch, which is pretty self-explanatory. When you switch it to the MF, you can now manually focus with this rear ring here. The front ring, of course, is going to be for zooming, which uh, another one, by the way, uh, you can see that the front of the lens does not extend past here. Uh, it's all going to be internal, which is awesome. And that also means it's also gonna withstand the weather much better that it is fully enclosed. The second one here is going to be your focusing distance. You know, you can have it on full where it's going to focus from its minimal to infinity to find that focus point. Otherwise, you can be very specific and say, okay, it's between 2.4 meters and 10 meters, or it's 10 meters on. Um, that way you kind of cut that focusing time in half uh, by telling the lens, don't worry about the minimal focus distance. I know that's more than 10 meters away. Just focus on that. The other one here is your optical steady shot. That's your stabilization. You can turn that on and off with the switch here. Now, the reason you would want to turn that off is if you do have this on a tripod, because now the tripod's doing the stabilizing. But if you're going handheld like I was, you definitely want to keep that on. And of course you have your stabilization modes, one, two, and three. 
Now you'll find that with these three modes, it's going to be for three different situations for stabilization. So with mode number one, it's just going to be your typical camera shake of just, you know, right here trying to stabilize that heavy lens. It's just that slight vibration that goes through your hands and your body because blood is constantly moving through your body. Thus, you have a constant vibration. Uh, mode number two is going to be more so for panning, following movement, which is kind of what I had it on to prepare myself for bird, birds in flight. Now, mode number three is gonna be for more erratic, kind of going over here and over here and over here, you know, following different patterns of movement. Um, if you were dealing with swooping birds versus one directional, you know, taking off in one direction type of birds, that type of thing, uh, number three is going to be really helpful for that. You'll also see on the Sony lens that it has some function buttons on the outside. So you have one, two, and on the bottom, three. Uh, function buttons that you can program to do whatever you'd like. So when you're out there shooting, you can go ahead and if I turn this way, you can access it with a finger or a thumb um, to change any settings quickly, like your focusing settings, focusing area, um, right through the lens. You'll actually find that on the Tamron, which as you can see here, is much smaller in comparison to the Sony, but the Sony does offer a little bit more considering it's a 600, this is a 500. So it does give you a couple steps closer than this one would. Uh, as you will see in the example photos here in a moment, you will also see that when you do zoom this, it's not internal. So actually when you fully extend that versus this guy here, you can see that they almost line up. If you consider, you know, putting that in your head, they're actually almost about the same size. This guy does seem to be more travel friendly though, considering that it can uh, collapse this way. Now this still can brave the weather, but you do need to be careful in this instance. You wanna make sure that this barrel is nice and clean when you do go to put it away or when you get home, just make sure that you go over it, clean your lenses, clean your camera bodies. They'll last a lot longer that way. You can also see that on the Tamron lens, you have your L bracket. Again, this is going to be for your tripod plate or your tripod to give your camera more center balance. Uh, this lens, uh, because it does have that zoom that extends from the lens itself, uh, you do have a lock switch. So if you're walking with it in this direction and you put your lock on, it actually won't let you zoom and the barrel won't start to kind of slowly slide out over time because after so much of zoom, 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 it's going to loosen that a little bit. And the great thing about Tamron is they do have a six year warranty. Uh, so if that barrel does get a little bit loose for you, contact Tamron, they'll take care of it in the first six years. Uh, now, what you will notice here is it does have an autofocus manual focus switch, very similar to the Sony. But what Tamron also has is if you slide the barrel forward and you see that white ring here, that's a another very fast way to switch it back and forth between manual focus and autofocus. So if you're suddenly noticing that your autofocus is not on, make sure you check that barrel because that's what that's going to mean. And of course your autofocus ring is going to be in the rear as well, very similar to the Sony. The other options that you have on here, of course, is going to be the autofocus distance, very similar to the Sony. You have your full, you have your three meters to infinity, and then you have your uh, infinity to 15 meters. If you know that it's going to be farther than uh, three meters away versus 15 meters away, uh, then you'll know where to kind of cut that focusing in half. You'll also see that we have the vibration control. Like the steady shot, this is the stabilization settings. Uh, which you can turn on and off. Again, you'd want to do that if this is on a tripod, you want to turn that off versus, you know, having it on. And then you have the same modes here, uh, vibration control mode one, two, and three, which is actually going to be the same as the Sony. So one is just for standard handheld movement, a little bit of shake. S number two is going to be for panning back and forth. Number three is for more erratic looking for your subject. Uh, but no shortcut buttons or anything fancy like that on this one. Now, I will say that the difference between these two lens, focusing 
I didn't see any difference at all. Uh, both were exactly the same when it came to speed and overall quality. You'll see in these examples here that I'm gonna have pop up, very similar to the 28 to 200 versus 24 to 105 comparison that I did a couple months back, that it's having very similar differences where the Tamron has a stronger bokeh where it has that nice uh, soft buttery background versus a Sony you can still see some sharper details in the background which it still gives excellent bokeh in that transition there uh, but I find that I am more of a fan of the buttery effect that the Tamron gives over the Sony however I will again point out that the way that Tamron treats their glass, at least in this comparison, as well as the 28 to 200 versus 24 to 105, is that you're getting a warmer image. So as you look through these here, as they're playing through as I'm talking, you can actually see that, you know, I did not edit the temperature in these at all or anything like that, that the Tamron pictures are actually warmer, have a warmer tone to them, which I would typically like um, over the Sony, which gives, which with their treatment to their glass, gives a more realistic tone of what it should be. Now, if I'm taking pictures of people or um, even some landscapes, I typically like a warmer tone, but with some of these birds and the way that their colors were and their feathers and uh, the water in their surroundings, I almost didn't like the warm tones that I was seeing. Now this is correctable. This is something that you can fix in editing. It's not really a big deal. You just add a little blue and we're good to go, but it is something that I noticed. Now, which of these lenses is going to be the one for you. Now, like I said at the beginning, I am not a straight up birder. I do not go out every weekend specifically to hike or seek out wildlife as much as I love taking pictures of animals. So for me personally, I like the size, the weight, and the abilities that the Tamron gives me. However, there is no arguing that the Sony lens is built very, very, very well. It is a fantastic lens to have in your arsenal if birding and wildlife is something that's a passion of yours. In the end, it's going to come down to what you want to invest in. If you're like me and you like to do this occasionally and you want to have a reliable lens to you know, grab and go when it comes to these kinds of circumstances, then the price point may be something that <laughs> matters for you. So what we have here is that the Sony here is going for $2,000, which is actually not bad for what this lens is, by the way, that is a excellent price point, versus the Tamron, uh, which again is something that's relatable to this, but also the 100 to 400, which I may do in a separate video when it's not back ordered. <laughs> um, this guy is going for 1400, which is, you know, depending on who you are, a $600 difference or only a $600 difference. So again, it's really gonna come down to preference. Go back, take a look at some of the pictures again for yourselves, see what you think is gonna be more your style and meet your needs. And for any other lens comparisons, let me know what you guys wanna see versus Tamron, Sigma, name brand, whatever it may be that I can get my hands on to kind of show you guys. Um, I'll probably be doing more lens comparisons uh, in the future, considering that a lot of the camera bodies I haven't done yet are still on back order. And we're being told they will probably be on back order for the rest of the year. So I'm going to try and get you guys uh, the most information that I can. So stay tuned for that and let me know what else you want to see on the channel. Until next time, keep your art for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.